My friends, I am just, I'm so done. I'm so done with this PC. I'm so done with today. Everything has gone wrong. I was supposed to film this video months ago, honestly. I started this project back in May. I don't even remember. And everything has gone completely wrong with this. Even today, as I'm trying to do this last ditch, I have to record it because I don't have any more time before the charity stream. I don't have any more time before the RTX 30 series launch, so I have to get this video out. As I literally get everything ready, my son's feeding tube, which just got freshly installed from a surgery, decides to pop out, and so everything we were feeding him is all over the place, and I'm sorry if that's too graphic for you, but I just, I'm freaking done. So. I just, we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about today's topic, which is my greatest failure as a tech tuber. It's this PC right here. I, everything went wrong. Everything did not live up to my expectations and I'm done with it. I'm just, I'm, I'm done with the concept and I'm moving on. And we're gonna move on to today's video partner, Vessi. And I know, I know, disparage Brett and then going into AdSpot, have to do this ad spot too. So uh, bad transitions aside, let's talk about it because I do love them. So today we partnered up with Vessi to talk about their weekend shoes. I don't know if you've had a bad pair of shoes in your life before, but I have, whether it be them getting holes in it from them wearing out or the fact that my feet get soaked in them when things happen like food gets spilled all over the place and you're trying to step through stuff and your, your feet get stuck in it. Well, thankfully, with Vessi's new weekend shoes, you get the 100% classic shoe look, but you get Vessi's innovative features such as the 100% waterproof, sandproof, slush proof, and yes, even slip proof, so they keep my feet totally dry no matter what the situation is, no matter what's going on at home, I can make sure that everything's good. Or if I just wanna splash in a puddle in my local grocery store's parking lot, I can absolutely do that. And if I get a dairy, the weekend shoe is 100% machine washable. The weekend shoe serves both as everyday purposes, but is also good looking, it's fashionable, you can look good, and you can splash in all the puddles you want. Additionally, the 100% vegan and made from a dual climate knit material, and this makes the shoe comfortable and breathable and it keeps you cool in summer and warm in the winter. I have absolutely loved not only just the new weekend shoes that they sent me, but the slip-ons, the everyday slip-ons. Those have been my go-to shoes until they sent me the weekend shoes. And now these are my go-to shoes. So with the launch of the weekend shoe, you can reserve yours for $5 down below at the link in the video description with the $5 going to supporting organizations that are dedicated to mental health awareness. And then you can pay the balance once they're ready to ship. Vessi shoes like this typically sell out. So get your $5 in for your pre-order and make sure you're you're ready to go when they officially come out with the weekend shoe. I've had it, I love it, it's good to go. So use the link in the video description, promo code UFD, vessifootwear.com forward slash UFD is the website you wanna to go to, link in the video description, promo code UFD. Now let's talk about something that's less put together in my life than my footwear, which is this computer, this freaking computer. I have been desiring to build my follow-up to last year's ultimate console overkill build is what we did. This was supposed to be my console destroyer build. It was supposed to have the highest end components at the time and run flawlessly in every scenario that you could throw at it. My, my console destroyer, we're finally gonna fix it today. We're finally getting this done. So the reason we actually haven't finished this yet was the first thing we had to, to figure out and fix was the fact that the original RAM in here was too high for the new CPU cooler that we were gonna use. So I had to get, I had to get smaller, smaller RAM. So now we're on the Corsair LPX. This is 64 gigs in two sticks. I'm very excited about this. Okay, so we're on the LPX now. And then that's that was the Zadak. And that's why we're running into issues on that. Then, um, after that, I was in isolation from my family because I had Rona symptoms and I hadn't gotten my, my uh, test results back at that point. And so I had to make sure that I didn't leave the room, but I had no way of opening this packaging. So that, that was number two. And then, yes, I was going to say, Cam, the next thing after I couldn't open this was as I was getting ready to come over here and finally start working on everything, my mic stand broke. It, it, it died. So I'm just gonna give you a little spec list. This is a Aorus X570 ITX motherboard. It is a Ryzen 9 3950X, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 megahertz. That's two sticks giving me 64 gigs and an RTX 2080 Ti. This was supposed to have every feature that you could possibly have and be in a PlayStation 5 form factor. This is a little bit bigger than a PS4, which thankfully I happen to have right here, but it's roughly the size that we're actually expecting out of the PS5. But 
When I first loaded it up with the cooler that I initially put it in, which was Noctua's LH9, it ended up sounding like this most of the time. And temperatures ended up being like this. So I did what I thought I needed to do, which was get a higher rated TDP cooler for the 3950X since it's 16 cores. So I picked up this. This is ID's Cooling's IS60, rated for 130 watt TDP. Great. I also knew that I needed better thermal interface material, so I went with liquid metal. And we actually installed this on my live streaming. You have to spread it, because otherwise it just kind of sticks. Oh, shoot. Just got it all over the motherboard. <laughs> That's what I get for trying to stream it, friends. In case you want to check us out over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UFDisciple. I build my computers live and then I make videos about them when I complain about how they don't work. So I had the hope, thankfully, since the IS60 is the largest cooler, the largest size cooler since the Fractal Design Node 202 can fit, I think it's 58 millimeter height coolers. The IS60 at 55 millimeters was the highest one that I could get that also had a TDP that was very good, 130 watt TDP. I've looked into others. Several people have told me to look into the Be Quiet Dark Rock. That one's too tall. I literally went with the best cooler I could get. I can't do water cooling because there's no space because the power supply is right here, the motherboard's right here, and then the graphics card's down here. There's no real room for water cooling in here unless I made some external modifications, which wasn't the point of the console destroyer. The point of the console destroyer was to have the form factor and the sleekness of the console, but having the performance and the flexibility of a PC, the highest end PC that I could build into it. But as I mentioned, it took me a while to get the cooler and I also kind of wanted to wait until the console games released on PC such as Horizon Zero Dawn and such as Death Stranding to benchmark those and just pit it against the PS4 is a kind of little good idea. Well, Horizon Zero Dawn didn't launch until August 7th and then by the time I finally got the cooler set up, which was just a couple of days ago, I realized that even with, even with the liquid metal and the 130 watt TDP cooler, the 3950X is too much. I cannot get good temperatures on it. I just can't. It hits 100 degrees Celsius after a little while in gaming. It ends up sounding like a jet engine and it just, it doesn't work. This concept doesn't work. I can't use a 3950X. It's too hot of a chip. Cars come in different shapes and sizes, pointless. Disgusting, ooh, did you guys see that? Oof, 100, 100 degrees. And I could uh, honestly downgrade to a 3900 XT and that would be great. And I, I think I'm gonna end up doing that continuing forward with this project, but you can also guess the next problem with this build. It's a 2080 Ti. These are gonna get replaced in like five days. It's, already, it's too late for me to make this video. This video doesn't even make sense. It's not the highest end components anymore because I waited too dang long and Nvidia's coming out with their cards too dang soon. So it's cool. I've tried everything to get the 3950X down to good temperatures. I've tried undervolting it, but we lose, to get manageable temperatures, we lose 14% in performance. And that's just, it's unacceptable. That's the, that's the antithesis of what we're trying to do in a console destroyer. Console form factor, maximum performance. And I can make compromises to get there, but I don't want to compromise. I think the best thing I can do is, and the thing that I maybe would allow myself to do is to modify the rest of the chassis in order to give more airflow, but that's not gonna happen either. So I stand, sit before you, a defeated man. My console destroyer build to get a PS5 size PC with the highest end components, I just can't do it. And maybe you guys know of a better cooler that fits in the Node 202 that would work with the 3950X. I went specifically with the Node 202 because of its aesthetic. It looks just like a PS5 as far as the stature of it. That's kind of why I went with this. I could go with different mini ITX systems. I mean, my freaking Motif Mobius that's sitting right over here, mini ITX, I could totally get that. I know the Cooler Master NR200 would give me much better temperatures. That wasn't the point, right? That's not the, that's not the vibe I was going for. What I wanted was PS5. And what I got was loud, overheating, giant piece of crap that's getting a video way too close to the launch of the new cards, so it's already obsolete. The 2080 Ti is now a dead card. It, 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 at least for the sake of this video, the 2080 Ti is now subpar because of the launch of the 30 series. And so I'm done. My console destroyer idea is gone. I do uh, anticipate 
upgrading it to the 30 series, but given the rumors of the Founders Edition, that's gonna be a triple slot, which won't fit into here, so I'll have to find a dual slot A or B partner model that will fit into the size constraints of the Node 202. And I think I have to downgrade the CPU. The 3900 XT is gonna be the one I'm gonna to have to go with. So the 2080 Ti that's in the system and the 3950X that are in the system, I'm putting up for giveaway on the charity stream that we're doing uh, yesterday. You guys already, it's already happened. So I, I'm giving away the parts in here. That's if we reach the donation goals to unlock the 2080 Ti giveaway, we had to have hit $20,800 and to unlock the 3950X, we would have had to have surpassed $39,500. I think it's obvious why I chose those numbers. But I need, to, I need to now get ready for the charity stream. I have too much going on. I am broken as a human. I am broken as a tech YouTuber. This is an absolute failure of a project. And I just need to maybe stop trying to cram so much high-end hardware into such small spaces or figure out how to be like optimum tech and make liquid cooling fit where it doesn't belong because he's a genius at that kind of stuff. So maybe I could figure out how to do this. Give me your suggestions down below in the comments, but I don't have any more time to work on this. I just needed to get the video out. And you guys need to check out today's video sponsor, Vessi and their weekend shoe. Check the link in the video description. Get $5 for your pre-order on these to reserve them. And you can use the promo code UFD when you go down there. That's it. That's it, I'm done. I'm so done with this console destroyer build. I'm moving on to my next mini ITX project, which I'm currently waiting, just so everybody knows. This is the Inwin B1. I have a B550 motherboard that's supposed to go in here with the Ryzen 7 4750G APU. This is gonna be my APU build. And my 4750G has been stuck in transit at the Orlando post office for seven days and it's a two hour drive. So I don't know if I'm getting that and I don't know when that's happening. So get subscribed for when it finally does because when it does, my APU build's gonna be great. The, the 2400G is not doing it for me anymore. I need an eight core, especially with this stupid 16 core 2080 Ti not working. Okay, thanks for watching, bye.